everybody to the day we live for around here, Amen. graduation. And Chad, congratulations for making it. I'm Thank really you, proud of you. Really, really proud of Chad. I've gotten to know him over the over the months. I started to say years, but months that he's been here, uh, and I have a little bit different perspective on him. He's actually gone out and and uh, worked for my brother a couple of times. My brother brags on him so much he wants him back every time, and I had to disappoint him and tell him, "Well, he graduated." So he told me to tell you congratulations. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for this place, what it means to so many lives. Thankful, God, that you have planted yourself here. Your Holy Spirit changes lives. It brings people in. It makes a difference. Um, and that difference lasts. And we're thankful for that. Proud of Chad and thankful that you've allowed us to get to know him and invest in his life. We pray, Father, that this will truly be a beginning of a brand new life for him and that today will um, just mark a, a stake that he drives down a time that he'll come he'll he'll look back on and remember as a, the day that it all started and we give you the glory and the honor for it all in jesus name amen. amen amen well it is my favorite day i love graduation day and you know, every time we do a graduation, I like to kind of do what they uh, call in the Air Force, re-bluing. Uh, re is, what's our purpose? Why are we here? Uh, why did we come to this place? What are we trying to accomplish? Uh, so it's important on graduation day, especially graduation day, to remember that. So uh, what I'd like to talk about is the fact that every individual that makes the decision to come into the New Beginnings program has made that decision based on a desire for change. And that desire for change usually emanates from the pain that they are suffering due to their addictive behaviors. I frequently quote a well-known axiom that says this, people don't change until the pain of staying the same is worse than the pain of change. However, if you truly desire change in your life, the first change you must make is in your mind. If you attempt to change your attitude or your behavior before dealing with your basic mindset, the change will only be temporary, and before you know it, your mind will lead you right back into the same problems all over again. Because real change comes from within. Some of you sitting here today, like myself, thought that by moving out of Wichita Falls, or out of Texas, or even out of the country, you could get a fresh start somewhere else. But your location won't change you. Because no matter where you go, there you are. No matter where you go, there you are. And money won't change you except to help you buy your way out of trouble for a season. Drugs and alcohol won't change you except for the worst. Power, religion, relationships, none of that will change you. In fact, nothing in your life will change until you change your mind. That's what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he wrote Romans 12 too. He said this, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might know what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. So what was he saying here? He was saying that we cannot possibly hope to understand God's good, pleasing, and perfect will for our lives until we have been transformed by the renewing of our mind. We must be transformed. And if we don't understand God's will for our life, we have absolutely no hope of conforming our life to His will. So that leaves us with the burning question. The burning question is this. How... How do we transform our mind? Well, it's an inner, not an outer process. It's not what we do. It's who we are. And the process for change is internal, not external. Because changing the outside doesn't change the inside. But if you change the inside, the outside will take care of itself. And that is the root and the basis of the New Beginnings program. If you're not living the kind of life you want to live, if you're not living the abundant life that Jesus promised you, then you must change what is in you. That is the gist of Romans 12 too. If you change what you put inside of you, let me say that again, if you change what you put inside of you, then you'll change what comes out of you. And if you change what comes out of you, you can change your world and the world around you. Thomas Chalmers once said this, every man is a missionary now and forever, for good 
or for evil, whether he intends or in designs it or not. He may be a dark blot radiating his evil influence outward to the very circumference of society, or he may be a blessing spreading benediction of the length and breadth of the world. But a blank he cannot be, for there are no moral blanks, there are no neutral characters. You are not a neutral character. What goes into you affects what comes out of you. And what comes out of you affects both you and everyone around you every single day. Your attitude and your mindset can change your circumstances and the circumstances of those around you. Casey Treat once said this, to the degree that your mind is renewed, you will begin to experience change and you will enter into a renewed life. So we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. But how do we do that? Well, Ephesians 5.26 tells us that the change that we need happens through the washing of the water of the Word. And we know that the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it divides the spirit and the soul and the joint and the marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is the Word of God that changes us. It is the Word of God that charges us. And it is the Word of God that challenges us. And that is why we must study, meditate, think about, pray over, memorize, and obey the Word of God. Because it is the Word of God that leads us into paths of righteousness. It is the Word of God that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And it is the Word of God and nothing else that will bring the men of the New Beginnings program to a place of peace and prosperity in preparation for their return to society. I'm here this afternoon to introduce you to our graduates. Before I do that, though, I'd like to say that when you are attempting to allow God's will and purpose to be manifested in your life, you will go through trials. Let me say that again. You will go through trials. It is not easy to change. That is a promise from Jesus himself. That promise is found in John 16, 33, and it says this, These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Ibiani Onu Oha once said this, Every challenge you encounter in life is a fork in the road. Every challenge you encounter in life is a fork in the road. You have the choice to choose which way to go, backward or forward, break down or break through. As you continue down this road called life, it is imperative that you do not choose your will over God's will. You must always trust God has a plan and a reason for allowing adversity and hardship to come into your life. In the midst of these trials and tribulations, you must continue to commit to doing His will and trusting Him in all things. Tough times build Christian character and faith. When I went to the NCO Academy in Landstuhl, Germany in 1983, there was a sign over the door. It said, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. Tough times will teach you that when you're in the midst of the storm, meditating on the Word of God will give you the assurance that everything is going to be okay. So pour your heart out to Him because He hears your cries and He will help you. Walk in obedience to His Word. Apply it to your life every day. Continue to give Him thanks at all times and remember, God is near and He is forever faithful. Our graduate today is Chad Manning. <laughs> Man. Chad and I have a lot of history together. There are very few individuals in this life that can push my buttons as quickly as Chad. And I'm pretty sure that feeling is mutual. If I was asked to describe Chad in a single word, that word would have to be persistent. Or perhaps stubborn. Maybe relentless. Either way, it is spelled A-N-N-O-Y-I-N-G. Annoying. Yes. <laughs> Chad could be extremely annoying in his persistence, yet it is that very same persistence that brought Chad to this point in the program after two previous failed attempts. Like all of us, Chad wants to get into his promised land. And like all of us, Chad has been his own worst enemy in that endeavor. There is a picture of Chad in the Bible, a description, if you will. It is found in Luke 18, 1 through 8. Jesus is speaking, and he says this. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, say, there was a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. 
And he would not do it for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow continues to trouble me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he hears bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Chad, you know that God has a tremendous call on your life. A call that will require you to see into the spiritual realm and go to war for the children of God. A call that will demand everything you have and more. The persistence, the stubbornness with which God has gifted you, and it can be a curse as well, is going to be necessary for that call. And because of that call, God is going to allow you to go through some difficult things in order to develop that complete trust and reliance on Him that will produce the obedience necessary for you to continue to clearly hear His voice. Chad, I believe that God has called you for such a time as this, to stand on the wall, to spend many hours in your prayer closet, to set down your wants, your needs, and your desires, and take up your cross and follow Him. Chad, I have two scriptures for you today. The first is found in Deuteronomy 39 through 10, which says this, The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as He rejoiced over your fathers, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep His commandments and His statutes, which are written in the book of the law, and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. Finally, I have Ezekiel 3, 16, 17, which says this, Son of man, I have appointed you as a watchman to the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, warn them from me. When I say to the wicked, you will certainly die, and you do not warn him, or speak out to tell him to turn from his wicked way to save his life, that same evil man will die in his sin, but you will be responsible for his blood. However, if you have warned the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he will die in his sin, but you have freed yourself from responsibility. Chad, I have every confidence that if you accept the charge that you have been given by God today, you will prosper, come into that good land that has been prepared for you from the beginning of time. Amen. Amen. First of all, before I start, I'd like to thank each and every person here, especially the staff, and especially God, for putting it all in my life. Each and every person in here has played a part in changing and pushing me to who I am now and to where I'm going to be in the future. But what I want to talk about today is what makes everything work, and that is love. Very few people know how to love, or they just choose not to love. Love is something you do, it is an action. And without love, this day would have not have come. Because of love and an undes undeserving love, I'm standing here, alive and well, with a new and a changed life. Because of love, I have a hope and a future. Love is a word used by many, but the action of love is used by few. Our word is filled with this word through popular songs, greeting cards, and also romantic novels that shower us with notions of dreams of idyllic relationships and feelings. However, real love is scarce. Real love is selfless, it's selfless giving, it's caring, it's sharing. It keeps no record of wrongdoing, and it's even worth dying for. We yearn to love and be loved, but we see few living examples of real love. Plentiful are those who grasp, hoard, and watch out for number one. Truth and love are vital to the Christian and inseparable in the Christian life. Therefore, all who claim loyalty to Jesus must be committed to these ideals, following the truth and living the truth, reflecting love, and acting with love to one another. The Apostle John says to walk in the truth and obey God and watch out the deceivers and love God and one another. So now Bob Johnson, Steve Sparks, Pete Frost, <coughs> and I don't see Wesley Holmes, but uh, I have seen and I have felt the love you have for me and the love you have for others. I've seen the walk that you walk and I've heard the talk that you walk. It is evident that he who lives in you is greater than he who is of this world. The love that you all have shown me <clears throat> is the love God has commanded and placed in your hearts. I've experienced and witnessed not only what y'all have done for me, but all who have crossed y'all's paths. 
The love you guys have had and shared not only changed my life, but others as well. There is no way I could ever repay the love that you all have shown me and the love God has shown me through y'all. But I can and I will start by paying it forward to the others. The same love, the same kindness, the same mercy and patience. The same love that, that I have been given. And when that time comes, when we have completed our race in faith and take that giant leap into eternity, I know and believe that the first words you guys will hear are well done, good and faithful servants. Welcome home. And now for my brothers coming out of Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding blood, and you have forgotten the words of encouragement that addresses you as sons. My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Endure hardships as discipline. God is treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of our spirits and live? Our fathers disciplined, our fathers disciplined, disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces the harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Therefore, keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have even entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those in prison as if though you were uh, fellow prisoners and those who are mistreated as you yourselves were suffering. Never will I leave you, or, sorry, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid, and what can man do for me? This is what we came here for. Chad, in spirit of the social distancing, I'm going to ask yes, you to stand <laughs> over there. And I love you, brother. I've got one word that I just feel like I need to tell you, and that's finish strong, brother. Yes, sir. Finish strong. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Woo! All right. One thing for you. Um, I was thinking about today, and you hold a special place to me. Like I told you when I first started here, you're the very first programmer to greet me, and I'll never forget that. Um, as I was studying today, I came to Mark 13. It says, all men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And I like looking over to the message version. It, it breaks things down to where I can understand it. Um, it says, stay with it. That's what's required. Stay with it until the end. You won't be sorry. You will be saved. Good job sticking with it. Thank you. So stay here, Lord. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us Chad, and thank you for giving him the guidance to stick with it, God. You've shown that with your love, anything is possible. I thank you for everyone here, God, and I just pray that when the hard times come, when the trials and the tribulations come, that you be there. You give us your solace and your strength to persevere and to push through. I thank you that these days, though few and far between, they're the moments that allow us to celebrate you and realize that you're the one that has brought us to this point. So as we move forward, I just pray that this celebration in Chad's heart continues, God, and that he's able to recall back to this day as a day that you brought him to. We ask you for, for love and for peace and for mercy as we go forward. In your name, amen. 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 amen.